the net work done on an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy. So what are we saying? We're saying that uh, the net work done on an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy. That's what the work energy theorem essentially states. If you look at this sketch, it kind of looks scary, right? Uh, but then the equations are not so difficult themselves, except from 5.5, which is a bit challenging. So stay with me until then. So 5.2 says that, uh, let's draw a free body diagram of all forces acting on the man as he is lifted upwards, right? So let's go ahead and read our question statement so that we can see uh, what is really happening here. So a rescue helicopter lifts a man of mass 75 kg, initially dressed vertically upwards by means of a light inextensible massless cable as shown in the diagram below. So the man is being lifted up by a cable, right? So we supposed to have uh, some force tension here. You can call it force tension or force applied. That would be fine. And then it goes on to say that while the man is being lifted up to a height of 12 meters, the average tension in the cable is 3,600 newtons. And then a constant downward air resistance of 1,540. So we have uh, air friction. Uh, going down so let's have fr there and then there's another force that is acting on the man as it's being lifted up right uh, that is the weight of the man right whether talked about or not we should always put it in mind that uh, gravity will always be acting and then uh, that is that that is 5.2 Let's do 5.3, right? Uh, so 5.3 is saying that uh, name a non-conservative force acting on the man while he's been lifted up. So in our context, we have one conservative force in our context, which is gravitational force, right? And then everything else is non-conservative, right? So you should keep that in mind. So if you look at our free body diagram here, we have force tension and frictional force, right? So those two are our non-conservative forces that are acting on the man while it's being lifted up because we know fully well that in our context, the only conservative force is gravitational force, right? So 5.3 here, we're gonna have uh, the tension force, the tension force, or the force applied, if you want to call it that, right? And then we have air friction or air resistance, right? So let's have a air resistance there. So that is a uh, 5.3. We have uh, tension force and air resistance. And then now uh, let's move forward in U5.4. So 5.4 is in that let's calculate the work done on the man by the gravitational force while it's being lifted. So the work done by fg will be equals to fg the force multiplied by the displacement multiplied by cos of the angle between the displacement and the force right so fg what is fg uh, fg is equal to the mass multiplied by gravity right so we're gonna have 75 multiplied by 9,8 and then what is delta x the man is lifted to a height of 12 meters so let's go ahead and have 12 then and then cos of theta uh, the angle between the force and the displacement the man is being lifted upright that's where our displacement is the, our displacement is going up and then we know fully well that force of gravity is always going down right so it is easy to see here that the angle between our displacement and the force of gravity is 180, right? So that's what we supposed to use there because the man is going up and then gravity is pushing down. So the angle between the two, uh, the two, the displacement and the force of gravity will be 180, right? Uh, so gravity is essentially doing a negative work on the man. So uh, if you put that in your calculator, you get minus eight uh, eight thousand eight hundred and twenty joules right uh, it's easy to see here that gravity is doing a uh, negative work on the man and then now uh, the question that we are all here for 5.5 
So 5.5 is saying that let's use it. let's use only energy principles to calculate the speed of the man at 12 meters above the ground, right? So when the question says let's use energy principles, there's only three equations you can use, right? You can use uh, work net is equals to the change in a k, or you can use uh, the work done by non consecutive for non conservative forces equals to change in ek plus uh, the change in uh, potential energy and then uh, the third uh, equation you can use you can say ek plus ep initial is equals to ek plus ep final right but in this formula here uh, this formula here it only works if there's no uh, non-conservative forces right uh, we have friction and air resistance so we cannot use the f this formula so the formulas we can use here is this first formula and the second formula so what i'm going to do i'm going to use the first formula right and then what i want you guys to do you can use the second formula and see if we get to the same answer right uh, so let me go ahead and do that and see what happens so we're saying that uh, we go in with uh, work net uh, being equals to change in ek right but at the same time we know that work net is equals to the sum of all the works happening on the object so to say right uh, so we have three forces uh, so we're gonna have the work done by gravity plus the work done by uh, force tension plus the work done by a uh, resistance being equals to a half mvf squared minus a half mvi squared right so we can say that we can say that right and uh, now uh, the work done by gravity we don't have to conclude that again because uh, we already know what it is right so we can just go ahead and put uh, minus eight thousand eight hundred and twenty, and then uh, plus the work done by uh, the tension force or the applied force, so to say, right? Uh, so if we uh, go ahead and compute that, we're gonna have uh, three thousand uh, six hundred, right? So we have three thousand uh, six hundred multiply by the displacement which is 12 and then cos of the angle between the displacement and the tension force so let's not forget that uh the man is going up right and then the tension force is also going up so the angle between the two uh will be equals to zero right so here we're supposed to be uh to have cos of zero and then plus uh, the work done by uh, the air resistance so we're gonna have what was the air resistance uh, that is 1540 multiplied by 12 but then the man is going up and the air resistance is going down right so the angle between the two should be 180 so we're gonna have cos of 180 and this will be equals to a half uh, the mass of the man which is 75 and then vf squared and then uh, minus a half 75 and then we have zero squared if you put this in a calculator you should get uh 15 000. so we have uh 15 900 being equals to so um 75 multiplied by uh, a half that will be 75 divided by q vf squared and then obviously uh, a half multiplied by 75 multiplied by zero squared is gonna give us zero right so we can just uh, forget about it and then uh, this would all imply that uh, vf is equal to uh, 15,900 uh, divided by 75 divided by q everything to the half right we make in a uh, vf the subject of the formula essentially if you put that in your calculator uh, vf should be equals to 20.59 meters per second